Hiya fishy folks and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. Hope everyone's having a great quarantine. I know I certainly am. <laughs> anyway folks, today sort of a, it's a, it's a uh, subscriber request, but sort of what do I have in the fish room? What chemicals or what um, things I have that are extra in the fish room just in case. So grab yourself a snack and a beverage and come on back. All right, fishy folks, welcome back. Guys, before I get started with all my stuff, if you could do me a favor, go ahead and just obliterate the subscription button. Just obliterate it. Sledgehammer, jackhammer, whatever kind of hammer you have, obliterate it. And then, when you're done with that, because the notification bell is a little bit more sensitive, why don't you go ahead and just gently caress it. Just, just rub it gently. Maybe talk sweet, nothing's into its ear. You know, whatever you wanna do. All right, so today's video, What's the stuff I have in my fishing? What chemicals, what equipment? And this comes from a subscriber from Brooklyn, uh, the same one who I got those mutts from a couple weeks ago, the mutt fry, which are in the mutt tank. Um, by the way, the fish room is a little bit of a disaster. I've been getting many, many orders from subscribers, from wholesalers. I have some more unboxing videos, but I've been doing a couple of those lately in a row, so I want to spread those out. So that's why this one's coming. So. Let's first, let's talk about the meds I have in the fish room just in case. Now, I don't carry a lot. I don't, I don't stock a lot of meds because meds have a shelf life. However, I do <clears throat> treat every guppy and pleco and fish really that comes into the fish room with the same trio of meds. One of them I am out of. It'll be coming from our good friends at Amazon um, shortly. I will have links down below, Amazon affiliate links, as well as links to my good friend Super Cichlids or Keith at KGE Aquatics, if he carries some of the stuff for you to buy from. Now, I'm just gonna talk about affiliate links one more time. If you click on that link and buy something at no cost to you, I make a penny. It's not a penny, it depends on what you buy, but it does help me and Michael's Fisher out if you do click on those links. That said, I would rather you click on one of the local guys like Super Cichlids or KJE or whoever else I, I, I mention and help support the local businesses. Okay, that's enough about that. So, what meds do I stock in the fish room? I normally have ICX from Aquarium Solutions. I'm out of it and my good friends Martin and Elisa are out of it. I didn't even ask Keith, I suck, I'm sorry Keith. But other meds that I treat um, all the time, all my fish in quarantine is General Cure, from API and Furan 2. Um, I also have some EM erythromycin left from when I used to use that. And you might be saying to yourself, Mike, why do you, why do you have the little boxes? Well, I do have the, the big tubs um, that I, I use for quarantine. Um, but API sends me stuff every now and again, and that's what they sent me. They also sent me the big Furan 2 I use. But this stuff I either won um, you know, in auctions, it came in a, in a tank or something. I'm just checking the, the expiration dates. They're all next year. <coughs> I'm fine, it's not Corona. Um, a couple years back, Lucas did a tank building contest at uh, the Keystone Clash that my good sexy friend Elizabeth uh, arranged. And in that, the tank that he got for participating were some meds. I think some of these came from there, to be honest, but anyway. What else, medicine-wise, do I keep in the fish room? Well, I always have fenbendazole flake. Sorry, fenbendazole flake, fenbendazole pellet. And I have levamazole flake. And these come from Everything Aquatic. Dina is the owner of that company. I believe they're out in California. Um, and Dina, all she does pretty much is medicated fish foods. She does have her own line of fish foods as well. Um, <clears throat> but that's where I go for all my medicated food. Again, links will be down below. I know I'm going to get emails. Hey, I need that email for the, the link for the thingy thing. Look down below. Okay. Uh, I also have Epsom salt in the fish room. Um, I have kosher salt upstairs, but this works just fine. Um, and I have this as a medicine. I don't use it in my guppy tanks unless I see something that I need to use it for. Um, but I don't like some people put salt in all their guppy tanks. I don't because most people that I sell to won't 
and therefore their fish won't do well. So yeah, all right, I'm just gonna move these meds out of the way. That's the med moving music. Um, this really isn't a medicine, but I do have Seachem Safe. And again, you might be saying to yourself, but Mike, you have the auto water change system. Yes, but sometimes I have things that aren't on the auto water change system, like the two tubs down here that you don't know about yet. Uh, that I need CKM safe for. Plus, upstairs, I have a tank that's not on the auto water change system, although I've been trying to think how to get it on the auto water change system. Um, and I need to do water changes on that. Now, normally I would use Prime, but years ago I bought safe, and now I'm just checking to see if, if there's a expiration date, because I'm sure it, it expires. I'm gonna have to call CKM. Do you guys know if safe expires? Because I probably bought this three years ago. Anyway. I digress. Um, safe, Seachem Safe. You should always have Seachem Safe or Prime, even if you don't have ammonia. I mean, even if you don't have chlorine, like if you have a well, but you should always, and you don't have chlorine or chloramines in your water, you should always have it in case you need it. Like if you have a cycle crash, you can use Prime to get through it. I've done videos on that. I'll try to link it up here, but. I also have a spare heater in the fish room. Now, I don't have many heaters in my tanks. There are some breeding for profit tanks that I have heaters in because I'm trying to get the guppies to grow faster. Um, and they grow faster when it's warmer. I also have this pleco tank right here that has like a thousand plecos in it. Um, I have a heater in there as well to get the plecos to grow fast. Um, but if I have a problem and I, like, let's say I have it in a tank and I need to crank the heat up, boom, I have a heater. Um, now this isn't like, this isn't a super expensive heater. I wouldn't stock a super expensive heater, but if I need one in a pinch, you know, I, I think I spent, I don't know, 12 or $13 on Amazon on these. Um, I know my good friends, Martin and Lisa are getting some new cobalt heaters and I can't wait to try those, especially in my outside tubs, but. I have extra filters. Here's just an extra box filter. Um, I probably have 30 extra filters. Why? Because I set up tanks in a hurry, because I'm dumb. I order guppies, or people send me guppies, and I forget, and then I need to set up a tank. Uh, so, plus, I sell seeded sponge filters on my website, Michael's Fish Room. So I've been replacing, when I sell a seeded sponge filter, I replace it with either a new sponge filter to reseed, or a box filter, so I know I can uh, still maintain filtration in my tanks. Uh, what else? Oh, something back to medicine. I have a measuring spoon. This is was a free giveaway from Lisa at Super Cichlids, and it's just a measuring spoon for uh, medicines. You know, tablespoon, half tablespoon, one and a half tablespoon, a pound. I don't know. It's just got all kinds of things. Um, I have in my fish room a pepper mill. Actually, I have two pepper mills. And this one is for, um, to crush up big pellets into fry food. Batteries need to be changed, but that's how it works. Um, and what I can do is I can mix different pellets. Like this is the six mil uh, Krill Pro from Northvin and also Predator Sticks from Cobalt, both in here, fry get them. The Krill is fantastic. Um, but that krill is 100%. The fry star, I think, is only 85% krill. So this is actually better. Ah, air stones. I keep extra air stones. Why? Because these cheap ones um, that you get at you know your local fish store or Amazon or wherever you get them from, they break. As soon as you put them in the water, they seem to disintegrate. So if I ever need one, I have extra. I also have, well, I had the clogless the ones with the multicolors, I think Corey sells them. I probably got it from Corey years ago at an aquarium co-op. But I just recently used it. Um, when I used to make my own filters, my own sponge filters, that's what I would use inside is one of these. Caves, I have some extra caves. Here's a, a terracotta pot I drilled a hole in, and uh, it's just a cave in case, like, I picked up some cribs once and they needed caves, so I had these caves lying around. I used them. Here's a PVC cave that I made out of a cap. Um, also, plecos like them. I don't normally use them in pleco uh, tanks anymore because it's hard to catch them when they're in the cave. Um, and they're probably not breeding in the cave because that's not the style they like. But um, that's, you know, just things to have in the fish room. 
what else do I have? Oh, <clears throat> pinky filter floss, right? I talk about this all the time. I have a whole roll of it. I also have extra filter floss like this. Why? Because Marineland sent it to me and I don't know what to use it for just yet, but I'll probably use it the same way I use this. All right, very important if you have a fish room. Wire ties. Wire ties are just like duct tape. They, they fix everything. And of course we have polyfill, which I'm almost out of and I've ordered on Amazon because my local guys don't sell in and there's no way I want to go to Walmart. So that's what I have in the fish room. I'm trying to think. I tried to gather everything here to make it easier. Mm, I mean, that's... Stand by. Sorry, I can't believe I forgot. The Brother P-Touch Label Maker. Now, if you only have one or two tanks, you probably don't need it. You might be able to use a Sharpie or a dry erase marker or one of those uh, paint markers that comes off with, that you can wipe off. But if you have a few different tanks, you may want to label what's in the tank. If you have fry, um, and the labels come off quite easily, but stay on even if they get wet. Um, when I first started, I didn't label things and I would have brain farts, you know, doing fish room tours. This is the red guppy, you know, and I, I wouldn't know. So now, every time I put new fish in a tank, I label them. Um, e even if it's like a really common, easy strain to remember, like green cobra, I usually label it. So, get any communication, not important. Okay. Uh, that does it, folks. Why don't you let me know down below what you keep extra in your fish room? Oh, damn. You can't see over there, but I have a ton of airline tubing, both blue and, and clear. I use the blue for water lines. I use the clear for airlines. Um, I've been thinking about redoing the air and water lines in the fish room. Not so much the water lines, because a lot of those are new from the new, lot, the new um, zones I've made, but maybe redoing the airlines because they're a mess. And I probably won't be changing the air loop. Like, I may change my watering system because it it really is ugly and I have a couple leaks that I want to address and yes uh, in I think my last video there was a drip people could see every like 14 seconds or 8 seconds I don't know I didn't count um, I know <clears throat> up here there's a, a drip from one of the valves one of the connections um, but it drips right into Chewy's tank so I don't really care about it but like things like that I do want to take care of because that definitely will increase the water cost. Alright, I'm babbling now. Hope you guys liked it. Let me know down in the comments below what you keep extra in your fish room. And uh, you guys, you know, have a great day. Alright, fishy f And then, when you're done with that, because the notification, notification,